Welcome to this video. This video can help you to systematically decide on the space of your modeling and elements type. This video maybe causes a significant reduction in your time which is spent on running your simulations. Imagine that we want to model a forming process like hydrostatic bulge test. At the start of our simulations we have lots of choices and we will think about, is my model three-dimensional? Can I use shell or membrane for my model? What about two-dimensional modeling? If I use beam or truss elements my model will be really simple. To receive a complete guide that which of these modeling space is the best for your case please keep watching this video. The first step to choose the appropriate elements for your simulations is to decide that you need to employ solid elements or you can use the structural elements. Solid elements contain 3D and 2D elements and all the plane stress, plane strain, and axisymmetric elements are 2D solid elements. Structural elements contain truss, beam, shell, and membrane elements. Despite the solid elements, structural elements significantly reduce computational cost. But we cannot use structural elements, unless in certain circumstances, that we are going to discuss in continue. In summary if the requisite circumstances are satisfied in our problem, we definitely use the structural elements to reduce the computational cost. Rather than simulation cost, in most of the cases, creating the geometry of the model by structural elements is much easier. When can we use shell elements? If in our structure typical dimensions are at least tenfolds bigger than the thickness, maybe we can use shell elements. In other words, we can use a surface in the middle of the structure instead of the 3D structure. Please note that in shell elements bending of the cross-section is also considered. The next requisite of using shell elements is the plane stress condition. Imagine that the z-axis is normal to the shell plane. Out-of-plane components of stress should be zero. Please note that these two components which show transverse shear are zero only in thin shells. In thick shells formulation, these components are non-zero. But what are typical structural dimensions? The most general dimensions that we should consider are the distance between supports or point loads. In curved structures like vessels and cylinders, we should take into the account the radius of curvature as the typical dimension and compare it with the thickness. The distance between stiffeners or gross cross-section changes is also another typical dimensions. In an acoustic or vibration analysis the wavelength of the highest vibration mode is also considered as the typical dimensions. If all of this dimensions are at least 10 times bigger than the thickness, we can think about using shell elements and check the stress condition requisite. In a note of a shell element there are 5 or 6 degrees of freedom. Each note can translate in three directions. Rotations around these directions are also considered in the formulations. There are also shell elements with the formulation that do not consider rotation around the z-axis and have 5 degrees of freedom in their nodes. First order shell elements have four or three nodes. Similar to all type of elements we can use second order shell elements. These elements have eight or six nodes. When can we use membrane elements? Similar to the thin shell elements, membrane elements are appropriate for a model with small thickness and which includes only in plane stresses. But despite the shell elements membrane elements have no bending stiffness and do not transmit moments. For example, the thin rubber sheet that forms a balloon only transmit in plane stresses and can be modeled as membrane. Truss elements are the simplest elements with regards to creating the geometry and formulation. Truss elements are used to model bars. A bar is long and slender structural member that can transmit only axial force. No moments or forces perpendicular to the centerline are supported in a bar. So the truss elements support only normal stress along the centerline, and five remained stresses are zero. The truss elements need least computational costs among all elements types. We can use 2D or 3D truss elements. In 2D truss each node has two degrees of freedom in two directions, while in 3D truss elements, each node can move in three directions. Use beam elements to model structures in which one dimension known as the length 
is significantly greater than the other two dimensions, and in which the longitudinal stress is most important. In other words, the structural typical axial dimensions should be at least tenfolds bigger than the cross-section dimensions. Examples of typical axial dimensions were explained for shell elements and here is the same. A 3D beam element can take into account the following types of loads. Bending in two planes, torsion, and axial tension or compression. A beam element in two-dimensional space has three degrees of freedom, two translations and one rotation. In three-dimensional beam each node has six degrees of freedom, three translations and three rotations. Example, in hydrostatic bulge forming a thin plate is formed by applying pressure in one side. Can we model this problem by structural elements? Considering the cross-section of the sheet in this process, if these two radii, and also the span of the die, are at least tenfolds bigger than the thickness, this process can be modeled by shell elements. If the thickness is small enough that bending of the cross-section is negligible, we can even use membrane elements for this simulation. If our problem does not satisfy the requisite of none of the structural elements, we should choose one of the solid elements. At first, we check the possibility of using two-dimensional solid elements, because they are more efficient than 3D elements. 2D solid elements include plane stress, plane strain, and axisymmetric elements. They can be quadrilateral or triangular. Quadrilateral elements are more efficient and accurate. Both linear and quadratic formulations of these elements are available. If the geometry, materials, and boundary conditions do not change along the third direction we can use one of the plane stress or plane strain elements. If rather than the above conditions, the out-of-plane stresses are zero the problem is plane stress. But how to check these stresses? At first, we can check these terms on the surfaces, if they are zero at the surfaces, we check whether we can extend these assumptions in the whole section or not. For example, in tensile test of a thin sheet, out-of-plane stresses are zero in top and bottom surfaces. As the thickness is small, we can extend these assumptions to the whole section and assume plane stress condition. So, small thickness is crucial for plane stress condition. What is difference between plane stress and plane strain problems? In both of these types of problems the geometry, materials, and boundary conditions do not change along the third direction. But while in plane stress out of plane stresses were zero, in the plane strain problems the out of plane strains are zero. Usually this assumption is true, when the length of the parts in the third direction is remarkably bigger than in plane dimensions. For example, in rolling of a wide sheet we can assume plane strain conditions, if the width of the sheet is significantly bigger than the thickness. The last subcategory of the 2D solid elements is axisymmetric element. When the geometry, materials, and boundary conditions are symmetric around an axis, we can use axisymmetric elements. In this case all the parameters do not depend on the tangential direction. These components of strain and stress are zero. For an axisymmetric problem we should model one half of the cross-section and use 2D elements to discretize it. Can a problem with asymmetrical load be modeled using axisymmetric elements? If you are interested in this type of modeling, please watch this video. Let's investigate our example one more time. Can we use 2D elements to model hydrostatic bulge forming? As the part, material, and boundary conditions are symmetric around the axis we can use axisymmetric modeling for this process. But as mentioned earlier, this problem can also be modeled by shell elements. Can we use both of these simplifications in one simulation? Please watch this video to find out the response. If your problem neither satisfies structural elements requisites, and nor 2D elements requisites, you should use 3D elements. Tetrahedral, hexahedral, and wedge are three types of the 3D elements. All of them can be first order or second order. Please note that the three-dimensional elements are the most general elements with the least assumptions, and can model all the previously mentioned problems but they have the most computational costs among various types of elements. A 3D element has three translational degrees of freedom in its nodes. 
Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel to find more videos about mechanics and FE simulations.